this is Goku Sun DBZ, and welcome to part one of a two part special countdown list. This is a countdown of, in my personal opinion, the top 50 best comic book slash superhero movies of all time. And with that said, this is my own personal picks and personal lists. And I hope you enjoy the music in the background if you can hear it. It's from Doctor Who. Right now, from the David Tennant years. But that's it. There will be no honorable mentions. There might be at the end of the next countdown before number one give a couple of dishonorable mentions. Coming at number 50. This movie was released this past year in 2017. Rated PG. It is the Lego Batman movie, a regular. Yeah. The Lego Batman movie. I'm actually surprised at how much I enjoyed it. Not enough, obviously. And I enjoyed it, obviously, enough to make this top 50 list, but only to make it to number 50. But with that said, I enjoyed all the cameos, especially with getting introduced characters some kids may have never known of, like the Daleks. Also, it was kind of funny to have, like, Voldemort and other characters from our franchise is it. Given it's Lego, that's why. Um, coming at number 49, Rated R. It was released in 2004. It was the last of a trilogy. It's the weakest of the trilogy, but I enjoyed it enough to make the list at number 49, and that is Blade Trinity. Which, of course, would be, I believe, the first comic book movie, if I'm not mistaken, with, of course, the now infamous Ryan Reynolds. Coming at number 48, it's kind of a guilty pleasure for me. This is movie is rated R. It was released in 2008. And it actually has the main antagonist, Samuel L. Jackson. What a surprise. And coming in at number 48 is The Spirit. Coming in at number 47, released in 2010, rated right PG-13. It was the second of a trilogy of films. It is by far, by many people, considered to be the weakest of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I might feel there's maybe one worse movie than it, but... My own personal opinion, coming at number 47, is Iron Man 2. And of course, if you're an ACDC fan, you're going to love the soundtrack to Iron Man 2. Coming in at number 46, it was released in 2006, Red PG-13. Directed by Brian Singer, it would be a loyal portrayal of the Christopher Reeves Superman at number 46. And probably know what it is now then. Number 46 is Superman Returns, which is a movie I actually thoroughly enjoyed. And I will defend that movie. I, I'm not a fan of Man Steel, but I love Superman Returns. Coming in at number 45, the second of a trilogy of films in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Coming in at number 45, of course it was released in 2014, rated right PG-13. And most of them are going to be PG-13 on the list. And that is Thor The Dark World. Coming in at number 44. This was released in 2013. We're at PG-13. It would be the second of three solo films involving, of course, the character Logan. So obviously now you know. Number 44 is The Wolverine. Which I thoroughly, personally enjoyed that film. And I like that he introduced the character Silver Samurai. They could have done a better job introducing the character, but what it was, it was still an enjoyable film. Coming in at number eight, uh, 43, read PG 13. Kind of a guilty pleasure movie of mine. It was released in 1993 with, of course, the over-the-top performance of Jim Carrey as the Riddler. So at number 43 is Batman Forever, which sadly gets an over 
looked, I thought, decent Batman performance by Val Kilmer. Coming in at number 42. This film was released in 2006, rated R, and off of a very interesting graphic novel, also had starring in it Natalie Portman, and it is called V for Vendetta. Very good, underrated film, I will say. It definitely has a lot of dark moments in the film, which is why it's deserving of the rated R. But it's a fascinating alternate reality timeline world that we're introduced to in V for Vendetta, which was, of course, uh, the story was written by the infamous, well-known Alan Moore. Coming in at number 41, was released in 2004, rated PG-13, and would star as the main antagonist, John Travolta. And also we would have an awesome fight scene involving Kevin Nash, a.k.a. whatever you want to call him. Um, and that is, at number 41, The Punisher. The 2004 Punisher, which I actually really enjoy. It's my favorite Punisher film. Coming in at number 40, it was released in 2002, Ray Dar, and it is Blade 2, which I still enjoyed. I found it kind of interesting, the angle. I don't feel it's superior to the original, however, at all. But still, making number 40, it did decent. Coming at number 39 is definitely not a great film, but it's a big guilty pleasure of mine, being I'm such a big fan of this series of comics. Coming in at number 39, originally when it was theatrically released, it was PG-13. Now you can only get in director's cut, which is rated R. And it was released in 1997 from New Line Cinema. Had an awesome soundtrack, though. With great songs from like Marilyn Manson, Korn, and Rob Zombie, and many others. And that is at 39, Spawn. As I said, guilty pleasure, personal favorite of mine. Coming in at number 38, is probably one of the little bit more recent ones on the list. It was released in 2016, rated PG-13, and I don't know why, I understand some people's opinions, but I still thoroughly enjoyed it. Obviously, giving him it to the 38th spot. And coming at number 38 is X-Men Apocalypse. Yeah, I enjoyed Apocalypse, so what? Coming in at number 37, was released in 2014, rated PG-13. It would be the last of two films, of course, starring, in my opinion, the definitive live-action Spider-Man. So now you know, coming in at number 37 is The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Coming in at number 36 is a film that's not based on a comic, but is technically a superhero movie. From, in my opinion, still one of my favorites, and I'm glad in more recent time he's made really good films again, and this is from the director of M. Night Shyamalan, starring Bruce Willis, and, of course, starring Samuel L. Jackson. Coming in number 36 is Unbreakable. Thank you, In My Channel Line, for that film. Coming in at number 35, released in 2005, Rated R is an amazing artistic movie, and that is Sin City. Really fun, love the whole art style. It's like a living freaking, how should I put it? It's like a living comic book, and that's what I love so much about it. From an artistic standpoint, Sin City is very unique from any other film out there. It's too bad a Dame to Kill for wasn't as good as the first movie, but still, Dame to Kill for, I guess, could have been some like an honorable mention. But Coming at number 34, was released in 1989, rated PG-13, and it is the first live-action Batman movie because that 1967 Adam West movie never happened. It doesn't exist. Never. 
This is the first true Batman movie. It was, of course, directed by none other than the great Tim Burton and music composed by, of course, the amazing Danny Elfman. Come in at number 34, Batman. Coming in at number 33, released in 2013, rated right PG-13, and this is a film I thoroughly enjoy a lot. of People may have not liked it, but I did nevertheless. But that's because I'm a big Robert Downey Jr. fan. Coming in at number 33 is Iron Man 3. Coming in at number 32 is one of the most recent films I've seen, released in 2017, rated PG-13. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I thoroughly have enjoyed Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. It's not nearly as good as the first, but still, I rather enjoyed it, given it's at 32 on the top 50. Coming in at number 31 was released in 2016, uh, Ray PG-13, starring Benda Cumberbatch, Doctor Strange. Coming in at number 30, is an actual animated, and by the way, all these films had to have had a theatrical release in order to qualify for this list. So with that said, coming at number 30, Rated R, released in 2016, the animated film Batman The Killing Joke. Coming in at number 29, coming out in 2016, Rated PG-13, is, in my opinion... Definitely a fun film. Why some people bash it, I don't know. But for me, at number 29 is Suicide Squad. Coming in at number 28, released in 2014, rated PG-13, and this may get me some hate because it's so low on the list, but I didn't like it as much as other people. Number 28 goes to Captain America, The Winter Soldier. Coming in at number 27, released in 2017, rated PG-13. A film that had no business being in the top 10 list of the top 50 superhero movies from Collider. It was a good film, which is why I made 27 on my list, but it's not making number 7. And that is... Wonder Woman makes number 27. I thoroughly enjoy Wonder Woman, but I don't think it deserves to be even near the top 10 list. Pure and simple. Not even making it into my part 2 of this list in the top 25. But with that said, obviously I still enjoyed it, giving it me to 27. Coming in at 26, and this is last for this video. And number 26 released in 2008, rated PG-13. This may give me some hay and I can't believe this was number one on Collider's list. Coming in at number 26 is The Dark Knight. That's right, personally, The Dark Knight is my least favorite of the Christopher Nolan Batman trilogy. Obviously, it did pretty good on my list, given it beat out 24 other movies for its spot, but... It doesn't deserve to be number one, period, or even top ten. It's overrated. Heath Ledger is not the greatest Joker. Mark Hamill is the greatest Joker that ever lived. Jack Nicholson was more loyal to the comic books than Heath Ledger. People only say that because Heath Ledger died, and that's it. That's the only reason. And yes, I'm going on a little tangent. I'm sorry. This is the end, part one of Top 50 Superhero Movies. From my own personal perspective, keep in mind. With that said, what movies do you feel deserve to be on the top ten list coming up next video? I'm curious to hear, and I'm sure there's going to be some people mad at me for my opinion on The Dark Knight. With that said, see you next time, and enjoy the Doctor Who music.